Welcome to Worship at Abiding Hope Church. We're so thankful that you could join us. We really love our digital community, and we thank you for um, being a part of our community at Abiding Hope. We don't think of you as a whole other place. We know that we are family, so welcome home. As we gather, we gather for communion, and so we invite you to have your bread and wine or grape juice available for that part of our service when we do communion. We do want to extend an, uh, an exciting opportunity to people in our digital community as well. We are going to go to Israel in 2023, and so we'd love for you to consider coming and joining us on that trip. There is a meeting coming up very soon that we plan on recording for you, and so that you would be able to see that if you're interested. Uh, in case that's not available, you can always reach out to us at Abiding Hope and let us know uh, that you are interested in joining us for the Israel trip. If you are someone who worships online sometimes and in person other times, just a heads up, uh, September 11 is our launch date when we're relaunching all of our family ministries for, um, from our youngest all the way through our oldest family life. Um, Sundays is coming back, and then we have our middle school and high school meeting after the 1030 service, as well as Children's Church. We'd love to see you as a part of that Sunday. And we're also looking for worship servants uh, to join us in part of creating this worship experience in our in-person place as well. So if you happen to worship with us on occasion in person, we'd love to uh, invite you to consider being a part of that worship experience. And now, on the way, we invite you to join us as we begin worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, your vision is one of love and life. It's one that brings us together. It's one that breaks down every barrier and every boundary. It's one that sees the rules and steps past them and invites us into that greater vision that is larger than every rule, larger than every law. We ask God when we get stuck in our own things, stuck in our own way of doing things, that you teach us a new way, your way, the way of life. Move in us today to see those things that we have put up, those, those walls of hostility that have separated us and invite us to tear them down with your spirit's help that she might come and instill in us a new way of doing life together. 
We pray all these things in Jesus' name who tore down every wall so that we might be free. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you were set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This is one of my favorite sweaters. I love this sweater. Uh, It's a great green. Green is my favorite color. I like a spring green, but not something that's too Kelly green, if you know what I mean. What I mean. And, and it's made of this really nice kind of cashmere. It's super soft. I can still throw it in the, um, in the laundry machine and pull it out, and it won't be like all weird. It's, it's getting kind of old. I've had it probably like 10 years now. And I, I, I love this sweater. It's my favorite. But I got a little secret for you. It's a woman's sweater. I know it's limited. So I, it's actually a woman's sweater and I found it at a thrift store and I like a good V-neck and I saw it and it fit me and I said, great. Now here's my question for you. Did you start thinking about my sweater different when I mentioned it was a woman's sweater? I still think of it as a woman's sweater. It's the most ridiculous thing. You and I both know cognitively in our head, in the mental exercise of this whole thing, a sweater is a sweater is a sweater is a sweater. Like this sweater doesn't have a gender. This sweater isn't built for a particular thing. It's two sleeves and a body and a V-neck. Why would this be woman's or men's or male or female or sold in this store or that store? So cognitively, I bet you're with me that you're thinking, well, it's just a sweater. Who cares? But then... There's that little part of me and maybe you that you're looking at it and going, but it's a woman's sweater. And what do I do with that? And how do I deal with that? See, we have these kind of pre-constructed cultural rules that go in our head that like women or people who identify as women um, are shopping these kind of stores and people who identify as men shop in these kind of stores and people identify with women wear these kind of clothes and people identify with men wear these kind of clothes and you have to go to this part of the store to buy this kind of thing and that kind of and we have these cultural norms that kind of set themselves up like rules 
And when we come face to face with the rule, even when we know the rule makes no sense, it's hard for us to let that go a little bit. It's hard for us to think differently. It's hard for us to say, why is the rule there to begin with? Why do I even have that rule in me? It's really the heart of what our text is about today. It's, it's a very simple story of Jesus who sees this woman who's in deep distress and he heals her. He, he fixes her problem and she is healed. And, and it's exactly the way the world should be, but it doesn't follow the rules. It doesn't follow the supposed to or the have to's. It, instead, he, he heals this woman, but he does it on a day he's not supposed to. He does it on the Sabbath. You're not, I guess you're not supposed to heal people on the Sabbath. And so people get kind of wound up in knots and they're like, yeah, it's good that you're healed, but, but this is the wrong day. Why are you doing this on the Sabbath? You're not supposed to do these things on the Sabbath. You're supposed to wait for another day. And Jesus just very bluntly points out to them, look, if your donkey had fallen into a ditch, you'd pull it out. Like, why is that okay on the Sabbath? And yet here's this woman who has been bent over for decades. Why wouldn't I want to pull her out? of this physical ditch that she's in. Who are you? Who are you to, to get so hung up on the rule, the law, that you miss the whole point, which is life, love, health, goodness, beauty. One of the things that we forget about Jesus and, and most of the New Testament is that Jesus is constantly contradicting scripture. Jesus is constantly looking at the Bible and all the rules and, and objects and things that we've created and said, those things don't matter. There's a better rule. There's a bigger thing than just what was written in the Bible. There is a vision for life and love. There is a, a whole new way of being in the world that is bigger than the rules that are prescribed to us through scripture. I know among my young adults and going back to some of the research that I've been doing, we see that one of the things that the Bible has done, one of the ways in which we've used the Bible is it's become a weapon against people, that people pull parts of the Bible out and use them to tell people you're out and you're in. That because this line in this one chapter talking about a particular person at a particular place, probably thousands of years ago, says this thing, then it applies to you and you're out. Jesus had no time for that. See, Jesus was connected to something more than just, are we following the biblical mandate? Jesus was always instead saying, is the biblical mandate following along with the vision for what God wants from the universe? Is this about wholeness? Is this about bringing people into relationship? Is it about bringing the outside in? Is it about giving the orphan a home? Is it about finding the win widow a place to be? Is it about finding your neighbors who are told that they are not in to, to say, you are welcome in this place? That is the vision that God gives us. and. If scripture contradicts that, Jesus has no time for that. Jesus says, you have heard an eye for an eye, but I tell you, love your enemy. Jesus plucks grains on the Sabbath and they get upset. He says, it is more important for us to eat. Jesus points to the vision that God has for us. And, and it doesn't just go with Jesus. It, it carries on into the people and the church of the New Testament. It's, it's Peter who says, I know all those laws that we heard about eating the right things and the, the, the things that we had held so long, they no longer make any sense because they're no longer about the vision of God has for the universe. We see Paul saying, all those people that we told were out, the Gentiles, the outsiders, the nations, we've been told this forever, but it no longer follows the vision of what God is doing. And so that is not what we're going to follow. I still see people taking the Bible, picking those things out in order to construct a reality which fits their own conceived bias of what they want God to be about. But God is always looking at the lines we draw and stepping over them and saying, the way of life is not the rule of law. It is the freedom that Christ gives us in, the death and in his death and resurrection. You see, when Jesus died and rose, it wasn't so that we would become slaves to the law. Jesus freed us, as it says in Galatians, for freedom's sake. We are freed to be free. We are freed to be in relationship. We're, we're free to be whole. We're freed from all the things that constricted us. And instead, we're free to live as children of God, no longer bound by the law, but living into the fullness of what God wants from us. 
one of my favorite ones is just people uh, thinking about, here's a simple one, something that maybe we don't wrestle as much in the Lutheran church, but people still do, is whether or not women can be pastors. Dun, dun, dun. First of all, I'd like to point out my mom's a pastor. She's been one forever, for as long as I've ever known. So I've, the question to me is sort of ridiculous. In fact, when somebody says, do you believe in women clergy? I often say, believe it. I've seen it. It actually exists. You see, they're still caught up by the rule from particular texts that they want to pull out. And in order to, to home a, a norm about patriarchy and making sure males stay in a dominated culture, they want to pull this out and hold that up for us rather than seeing what the Spirit of God is doing, that the Spirit of God is lifting up women and men and people of all gender spectrums to preach and be the good news of God, that people are lifting up uh, heterosexual and, and homosexual people and asexual people to preach the good news of Jesus, that people are drawing in from many colors, cultures, backgrounds, tribes, and each of them is being a gift of the Spirit to preach the good news. And it should be our mind that says, what is it about the rules in my head that wants to distance these things? Maybe there's a better vision, a bigger vision that I need to listen to. Paul gives us a very easy way to measure that. Paul says, if you want to know what the Spirit's doing, look for this. Is there love? Is there joy? Is there peace? Is there patience? Is there kindness? Is there goodness? Is there faithfulness? Is there generosity? Is there self-control? He gives these fruits of the Spirit. He says, you'll know when the Spirit's moving, when you see these things active. He says the other fruits are about avarice, anger, separation, murder, strife. So when you're seeing anger, separation, murder, strife, you know that's not the work of the Spirit. When you're seeing love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control, when you're seeing those things active, that's when you know God is moving. Do you get stuck in the rules sometime? I know I do. I know I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And sometimes the rule has a hold of me. But I have to remember that I'm freed for freedom's sake. That like Jesus, who saw a woman and said, be healed. That I am called to live in a place that moves beyond the rules. and Instead connects to the vision of God that brings us to wholeness on the way. I invite you to think about those things in your life that maybe you've been hanging on to a little too tight. And maybe it's been confusing to you because you see love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, all those things and those gifts and those spaces. And you're just like, How, why am I supposed to call this evil when there's obvious goodness there? Maybe, maybe Christ is beckoning you to step past that rule, to step past that law, to see the God who's moving and active in those spaces. To see the God who's showing you a brand new way, who like Peter is open to new ways of eating, to Paul, new ways of welcoming in, to Jesus who sees the broken and needs to be whole. Maybe, maybe you need to find that space and open your heart to the glory of God that is coming to us in these places. May you, may you be freed for freedom's sake. If you'll pray with me. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. On paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown, give us faith to go out in good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. In the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray for the world, the church, our community, and for all people according to their need. Let us pray. God, we draw near to you with the simple desire to be refreshed by your love and grace. Out of our brokenness, we seek you in prayer, and with humility, we ask for your healing touch. As we pray, come to us, hear us, and transform us. Your vision for all of creation to live as one seems far beyond our reach. Our mishandling of individualism and freedom consistently drives us away from you and from each other. And as a result, your creation is in pain. Pour your grace upon us and guide each of us to live in ways that lead toward peace and oneness. We lift to you all who struggle to experience love and life due to repression brought about by injustice, cultural and social insensitivity and economic hardships. As we strive to be love and hope in the world and ignite in us a passion to dissolve and dismantle any obstacle obstructing the path towards experiencing real life. You have created us to be in loving relationship with each other. You equip us to be love and hope to the lost and the hurting. Yet too often we choose the easier path of inaction and avoidance. Today, we lift up those who are struggling, suffering, or mourning, and we ask for the strength and guidance to be a healing presence in the midst of their pain. Lay your healing touch upon them and bless the steps of our journey as we walk with them along the way. God of the journey, we give you thanks for your love which guides our path toward love and life. Continue to inspire us to engage life in ways that lead to the healing and restoration of your creation and use our gifts in ways that bring love and life to all. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with, if you're gathered with people to share that with one another, if you're on your own to know that peace is with you, but maybe take this moment to pull out your phone, to text somebody or simply to sit in a place of peace and extend that peace from your heart and soul and spirit to someone in your life or a group of people in your life that need to experience peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As God's family, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We've said often at Abiding Hope, this meal has been a source of division, a weapon used against people to talk about who's in and who's out. We've told people they can't come to the table unless they come in a worthy manner. Let me ask you this, Whom among, who among us is worthy? None. If we're gonna wait for worthiness, for this, for this meal to be about worthiness, it is gonna be an empty table. The Jesus who broke bread and wine did it at a table with Judas who betrayed him, with Peter who denied him, with James and John who didn't understand the vision of God, with women and men gathered around that table who had lived broken lives and who had made great mistakes with their life. Jesus said, this, this is given for you. See, when we talk about something being given, 
It means it's a gift. So receive this gift. For the gifts of God are free. As you take your communion, uh, you will take the bread and you'll say the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you if you're sharing that in communion. But if you're on your own, know this. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. As we continue our journey on the way, may God ignite in you a spirit of wonder. May you be inspired to see the world as it could be when we choose love and hope over all else. And may we find ways to co-create God's kingdom here in our lives today. So love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the triune God. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.